Hi Stampers, welcome to our Poinsettia Place class. This is the first video that I'm filming of your five projects. So you're gonna have four cards and one project. That's not a card. Um, it's not necessarily the order that I will post them in and it's not necessarily the order that you will watch them in. So it might be out of order. But for this one, I just kind of wanna go through what's in your the bundle that you've ordered and kind of go over how we're gonna do the class because this one was a little bit of a struggle for me because the beaded pearls, one of my favorite embellishments that we've ever had. They're absolutely beautiful, but they're a bit trickier to use because you can't put them all over your cards. For one, they're a little bit too, you know, if you have a sheet of the other embellishments, you can stick them all over. You're not gonna take an $8 item and stick several of them on one card because they're meant to be the flower center, right? So that we were a little bit limited on the embellishments. And then the ribbon is red, which when we work with, you, you're gonna see, even as you look with your designer series paper, there are just two sheets that have the red. So if I wasn't flipping to one of those, then our ribbon really didn't go with anything. So the card I'm gonna do today, I made the red ribbon work, even though I'm not using one of those two designs of paper. There also is an, an embossing folder. So as I do the cards, I will make some suggestions because I know obviously you have a cut and boss machine or a big shot if you've got this class. So you can add by all means, feel free to switch, a, switch some things around. Like on the card I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna use a punch, but most of you probably have um, dies that are some, some fancy squares that are scalloped or a little bit more size proportioned to, you know, that would be smaller and cut them out a little bit more ornate that might match this. So feel free to use that. I'm using the punch just because of time <clears throat> and because I didn't want to use a die and then get that stuck in your head. Oh, I have to use that die because the punch will work and the punches are inexpensive, but I want you to go look at your dies as far as, because I'm just using them to put the sentiment on there. And I mean, you can cut a square around it if you want. Um, but I know that most of you have some dies in other sets. So a lot of times what I recommend is if you get dies, I have a little magnet board that stands on my desk and that's where I keep all of my kind of generic, you know, the little banners, the little squares, the things that are in sets that may go with a, a bundle but they'll work with anything. And I keep those there so I can use them. So pull some of those out that may match this. Then the other, um, the other thing that I will show you, I lost my train of thought, is other ideas for ribbon. Because on a couple of cards, I'm not going to use ribbon just because the red didn't match, but I will give you some ideas. Because we have tons of ribbon. I know you may have retired ribbon. Um, you may have some current ribbon because there's a lot of ribbon in this particular catalog that will match these cards. It just didn't come in this suite. And because the class is designed to work with this suite, um, I just left it off some cards. It was killing me, <laughs> but I did. Um, but I will give you some ideas. And again, I have some of the cards don't have any embellishments. The one I'm gonna do first doesn't have any embellishments because I didn't wanna stick the beaded pearls on it, but you could add pearls or you could add the champagne rhinestones or you could add other embellishments just to add a little bling and I've left them off. But I will, if I remember, um, I can add them and by all means, you feel free to when you do. So. Uh, I'm gonna, all of this, we're gonna make our way through most of the dies. We're gonna use most of the dies. We're gonna use a lot of the paper. We're gonna use the plush paper a lot. Um, so we'll have used a lot of it. So I'll give you ideas on how to use it all. So for this first card, we are going to use, I'm only gonna use the ink colors for the most part that are included in your, in the suite. This is one I haven't, it's a new one. So we have Bumblebee, um, Garden Green, Soft Suede, Old Olive, and then Real Red. My Real Red isn't sitting here because it's not on um, either of these two projects. So there is one project where I've thrown in a couple of other blend colors um, or ink colors, sorry. So for this one, we are going to use a four, and a, it's four by five and a quarter. And then this is four, and it's one of your, um, specialty papers, the plush paper. And when I cut it, I made this, sure this went down the center and then I got the two scrollies down the side. So when you lay it on here, it's more centered. Cause this one is really pretty, but if it's 
like if you cut it funny, then it's gonna make it look like it's crooked. And that's just gonna be our background piece here. And then I'm gonna mount it on Old Olive. So put this here. Old Olive is one of our classic colors. It's been around forever and everybody loves it. It's one of the, the top performing colors all the time. So you're always gonna be safe ordering anything Old Olive. So one of the suggestions I would have is and both of the ribbons will work, is trimming the town. So if you get this packet of ribbon, um, it's got the red, which will work with the red paper. And then look how pretty this would be if I added it to this, because that would work. Um, any of our, like the, the this vanilla, which is in the annual catalog, that would work. Because this is white, but the flowers tend that direction. Then also out of the annual catalog, you could do any of these so uh, as I mean there's just a zillion options of what you can put ribbon wise this one's not gonna have ribbon for us so I'm gonna add shimmery white cardstock to stamp on and then I'm going to stamp with soft suede because if you look at this paper sometimes people are like my card doesn't look just right um, and it's because they're adding black and sometimes I love black I mean it's my favorite you know, my most versatile color to stamp with. But if you stamp black for this image, it's going to be your points that is black. And if you look at this and you're trying to get a matching flower and leaf combination, it's gonna be a little bit stark for this. So it's stamped in soft suede, so I'm gonna stamp mine in soft suede. And I'm gonna use the flower that's a little bit more generic. And because I'm using this one, then I'm not gonna need the beaded pearl because I'm, I wanna make it mock that. And if I use the beaded pearl, it's gonna cover up my center, which is gonna use lose all of the opportunity to put bumblebee on it. So stamp this. You, If you have the, the stays on, the brown stays on, the saddle brown stays on, oops, I didn't do the leaves. You could use it because it's more permanent. But here's the thing, if you stamp with photopolymer and you use any stays on pad, you have to wash it off immediately. So like what I just did, that would have to be washed off because the stays on will eat your photopolymer. Not like the next day, your stamp's not gonna disappear, but over time it de deteriorates your stamp. So this will work just fine for what we're gonna do. We're not gonna water watercolor with it. So got this. And then I'm going to use my, one of my favorite colors. This is Shimmer White, and I'm gonna use the um, Champagne Mist and just an old Stella, a Wink of Stella. If you don't have Champagne Mist and you have a new Wink of Stella, that, is, that option works as well. So you squish your lid together. You have to push kind of hard. Or you can use refills and just squirt a tiny drop of refill on like a styrofoam plate, or if you have a little paint palette, shake this up. The inside of your cap then becomes your paint palette. I'm gonna start here with this. Just grab a little bit of the bumblebee. And it's super sparkly. This card's gonna be so sparkly when it's done. So you can see now, if I put those beaded pearls on there, then that's just gonna cover that up. Then to switch colors, just kind of come over here. Okay, so the leaves on the paper, because we're gonna try to do the same thing. The leaves are the garden green and the flower itself is old olive. So let's just mock that. I don't think I need to squeeze these because I've already done it once. So you can see here, I'm gonna try to do this flower. So it's mostly um, old olive light and then it fades to vanilla. So what you wanna do is you wanna get quite a lot of I mean, in perspective, of the champagne mist on there and then just pick up some of the old olive. And then we're gonna do each petal individually. So kind of get rid of that big spot because wherever you touch first, that's gonna be the greenest part. And then just kind of clean that off. Just like that. And again, grab a bunch, get some ink and then do another petal. And doing it this way, each petal is gonna look like it's its own petal, just like they do on here. And then this one, I didn't need any more paint because I still had quite a lot. My cat wants me to play with them. 
So kind of, this needs to always be wet. So if you start streaking ink on there and like when you touch it, it's like, oh my goodness, that's a blob of ink. That means your, your brush is too dry. I'll do one more petal on this. And I'm also okay if I cover up a bit of those edges to, to kind of soften them. Maybe the edges of those flower, I think poinsettias are actually leaves, aren't they? So these are all kind of leaves. And then just kind of get it there. So you can fin finish that whole thing off. I've already done one, so it'd be all the way dry before I sent it through. It dries fast, but you want to make sure that it's not at all wet before you send it through your machine because you don't want it to stick to your plates. So then when you look at the leaves, the leaves are almost totally um, garden green. I don't want mine to be totally garden green. And they're able, because you know it's paper, the, the veins on the leaves are white. Ours aren't going to be able to be that way because we needed that to be stamped. So for this one, again, just pick up, because this is going to be giant, you can kind of get a little bit more. You don't want to ever get too much on this because it makes them gooby. Just grab that. And then again, kind of go fast with that first little brush so it doesn't make one stark green line. And it dries fast in your lid too, so you want to work fat, kind of fast enough that you don't have a... Make sure it's pretty, but you don't want to waste all of that paint over there. And just fill this in. So you'll want to do this because they're beautiful. They're much more beautiful in person than what the camera can pick up because they are super sparkly. And so for this, just for kind of my brush wears out, I'm fine to just kind of clean it off and let that be the shading. So then when they're done, always make sure when you um, put it up that you've washed your um, thing off. And don't like smash down on these because once you do that, then when you put them in there, they, you know, a brush dries kind of sprayed out and then they're never as fine tipped to, to use again. So make sure you just kind of do it gently and then put the lid back on. Now we have them, and they look like this. So you can see we've mimicked it pretty well to match the paper. So let's send these through, and all three of these have dies. And they need, if you have this new machine, they need the, the white, the one that goes on top, a cutting plate. I'm gonna cut mine apart. And then this one is one of the ones that you kind of have to spin, but it matches up just perfectly. I don't know if my leaves, I stamped them maybe too close together, maybe not. I like to stamp my things on one block, partly because if we do these at classes, I'm always trying to save blocks. I don't think they're gonna fit. And I'm never adverse to sending things through the machine twice. Now, when you put your, your top on, make sure that you don't Squish it under and do that because you're likely to move them. So just lay it down flat. And then once you lay it down, then grab it. Because this one right here, if it moves, then you'll be sad if you spent all that time painting it. And then it moves. So you can always cut them first. If you find that your stuff moves on occasion, then by all means, cut first and then paint. We're going to need some of these for our next card. Not that one. Look how pretty those are. So pretty. On one of our projects, you're on the project project, you're making a candle. And on it, you're cutting out paper. Um, just because that's the way I designed it. I think if you're keeping the candle, then I would do this. And then maybe swap cutting out the paper and putting it on your cards if you're lost for time. Okay, now 
we just need to make the tag. And then I'm gonna put it together and maybe I'll add some ribbon, maybe not, we'll see. <laughs> It's because it's going to kill me to not have ribbon on this card. So I've pulled out the Happy Holidays that's out of the set and because it's the smallest one. I like the Merry Christmas, but I didn't want to really compete with this because this isn't huge. And I didn't want the, the sentiment to be as giant as my design. I'll use the soft suede. Again, I could use black, but then it would be a little bit more stark than my design. This is a pretty fun. Like I'm gonna go kind of sideways with it. So I'm gonna use this to mount part of my, I could have gotten a bigger piece of paper, but put it in there and kind of gr grasp it, but I'm gonna use that to be a mounting point for my flower. So we have this. Our little, I don't know how they ended up apart from each other. This. Now, to put this on here, you need to decide when you're doing yours, like where you want this to be. So I know my flower is going to end up kind of right here. So that's a good place to start putting this adhesive. And this is just seal. You don't need seal plus for this card unless that's all you have. But the seal will hold fine. I, um, the curvy celebrations is one of my favorite little things, but I have curvy dots all <laughs> over my table. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and then build my flower up. And sometimes when I'm doing Christmas cards, like if it's a card and I'm just mailing a birthday card, I don't mind if I pay a little bit extra postage. But if I'm sending 50 Christmas cards, then um, I try to keep them so they're not going to be a lot in postage. So I'm not going to add too many dimensionals to this. If it was a Christmas card, I'm, I mean a birthday card, I might add, like, really build this up. But if, say, maybe I'm mailing 10 of these, I don't want them all to cost super extra. So let's put this here. I might add one dimensional. And see, we don't need the, the bead on this. Again, that would add extra postage. It would be beautiful. But I would also lose the yellow. So that bumblebee would be missing. And it really pulls that together to match the card. So don't feel bad if you didn't put it on there. And then I'm going to take this one. And I want the larger leaf. I always like when I do classes, I feel like I can give you guys a little bit more of my design tips than when I do just a regular video. I want the larger leaf to cover up the specialty paper is beautiful, right? Um, but if I'm going to lose something, I want it to cover that up and not more of my design down here. Because this one's going to go down here. So that's got the one dimensional and then this one's going to be fine. And I'm just bending it ever so slightly with my hand. Right here. And then I'll leave this sit here a second. So you can get a picture of it if you want to take a screenshot of that. Super pretty, but if, you know... In a, in a real world, in a real class, if I was designing this, I would probably have grabbed this ribbon. So I'll just tell you what I probably would have done. And done a little thing, which I'm going to do with the red ribbon on the next card because it does have red. So I probably would have put some of this in here. So that would come out behind. How beautiful would that be? You want me to just do it? I'll just do it. So, so this is what you have. You have all the supplies to make it like this because that all came in your kit. Except for the punch, but I mean, you can just do that on a little square. So we'll take it one step further because it's killing me. So just take a little bit of some, and most of you probably have some olive ribbon. But this one's from Trimming the Town. And because it's the olive and the gold, it just matches all of this so nicely. So just kind of doubled that over, added a little bit of adhesive. So now we've got that. And then, I don't have this stuff sitting out because I wasn't going to do it. I would take some gold or some champagne. Whichever one I find first will work. I have a spinny thing. And it's, I moved it out of the way because when I do two cards in one video. Oh, here. How about these? 
These are just our gold pearls. And I know a lot of you have them because they're often my free thank you gift. And these will mimic kind of the big pearl. Let's put three of these on here. But they've recently been a thank you gift, so some of you probably already have those too. There you go. Now it doesn't look empty. I always feel, I try to always put some ribbon and an embellishment on every card. So this one was, when I did my mock-up, I was like, oh, so super pretty. I'll, I'll hold that still again in case you want to get a, a screenshot and put it down. So let's do the second one. This one's super fun. Now this next one, if you are watching TV, if you're gonna put on a Christmas movie, if you just like to color, it's not one that you'll make for everybody on your list. It's more of a special card. And it's because it's coloring, because so you know anytime we color. So for this one, we are going to use the specialty paper. And so we've got the scrolly, you're gonna use the scrolly on the candle. And then you, for this one, you can pick whichever ones you want. But look, this is so super fun. I don't know if you've noticed it. I'm gonna roll over and get my other stuff. So several of the papers in this, in your papers, work with dyes. So this one, the leaves on this will cut out with the leaves on this. I know it's gonna be really hard for you to see this because of the, the paper being white. So since it's gonna be hard for you to see because the paper's white, we are going to color them. So I'm gonna use the colors of blends that are in your thing. So I've got the reds, the olives, and then we don't have a bumblebee blend. So any of the yellows will work because we're gonna color um, this, the sheet of this because we're gonna need um, one holly leaf. And then we're not gonna color these, but this piece here cuts out this. So you can see it cuts out all of these, but then a lot of them go the other direction. So look what happens. Where'd I put my scissors? It cuts out this direction if you cut it out upside down. So let's get these out and then I'll show you. And you literally just cut them out individually. And again, um, if you've done my try it classes, you know that you can make use of the ones on the outside edges. So you don't have to throw them all away because there's ways that you can make them work even though you lose parts of them. So here's two of these going opposite directions. And these we aren't gonna color. We're just gonna leave these the, the pretty white velvet. We've got that. And I'm gonna lay this on here so you can see. So all you do, you wanna be a little, you don't wanna put too much because you know, blends bleed. So this is the light. I mostly used the bullet tip. It's really kind of fun. And I didn't go all the way to the edge. I just kind of stayed to the edge and then just drew some color in the middle. And then you let the blends do their work to bleed to the edge. It's very vintage. It screams 1960s Christmas card. My dad worked at a print shop. Um, he was a printer and they did in the sixties and in probably until the mid seventies, they did all kinds of beautiful personalized Christmas cards and they had, would have huge books, giant books of cards with all kinds of gold and flock and sparkles and people would come in and would pick them, whatever card they wanted and then they would print them and personalize them. So, then at the end of the season, he would bring them home and my sister and I would play with all of them. And we would dream of the day that we would be rich enough that we could afford to have our Christmas cards printed. But you know, by the time we were old enough that it was a possibility, nobody did that anymore. So I just make my own. So one thing, it takes maybe 
Depends on how humid it is at your house. It does take a little bit for it to dry. Where's a piece of scrap paper? That's scrap because it's a when I was testing something else. That's pretty dry. If you put too much and like the red does take longer, that's already dry. If you put too much ink, it is going to take a while. So for this one, I just am going to color this. I'm going to leave these the color they are. And then I'm going to take the other design, which is the giant poinsettias. This is the one that really looks like a card I would have picked when I was a child and I was having them personally printed and cut it four by five and a quarter. And then this is the one where you're going to color. So if I was going to make these for my Christmas cards, and I may make a couple, I may make one for my dad. I think he would like it because it is very reminiscent of that time in our lives. Um, if I was going to make several of them, I would paint, I mean, color the whole thing at once <clears throat> because it's easier, I think, to just use the backing that comes in it um, and just paint the whole piece of paper and then just let it dry and then cut it down. Same with this piece, color all of these while they're still attached. It'd be much easier. I've already colored that because I didn't want you to um, have to um, watch, but I'll color. I'm going to show you the colors that I used. So I used the dark red on the little tiny ones. And again, you just kind of go and you can see how fast the, the red just bleeds into it. So don't go to the edge because otherwise it'll bleed right off that the, the plush part and right onto the vellum. And then it will take longer to dry because blends on vellum take a little bit longer. So mostly just outline it and then let it bleed. So I did the little ones in the dark red. And then the big ones I did use the brush tip because it would take a longer time to use it. And I just kind of outlined it. It didn't take very long at all. And then just kind of swipe that on there. And again, it, it kind of bleeds and fills it all in. But I kind of like that brushed look. And then this is why you can just use any yellow. Because the only yellow that you're going to do are those teensy tiny little dots. And you literally just touch the dots with the bullet tip. So any of the yellows will work because it's just a yellow center. Then there are um, big leaves and little leaves. And so I was just kind of random with them. I like the way that both the greens look and you kind of need both the olives to kind of center it. There is garden green, so you can pick garden green if you'd rather, and you do need the bullet tip for this. So again, kind of just go fast, otherwise it'll bleed right off the end. So there's that one. So that's the dark, and I'll do it right here so you can see the, the big difference in those. And you'll see when I show you the paper, that's the light. So I colored the whole piece and it looks like this and that lovely. And then you have, do have all these little dots that are on the paper that you just leave white. So then I took a piece of white cardstock and I cut it long ways just because sometimes I like to have a different fold. And then I have a piece of white that is again, four by five and a quarter, just because this is vellum. I just felt like it needed something to be mounted to. And I want my card to open this direction. And so then I liked my design to go this way. So I know my tag is gonna go over here. It's gonna mount this here. As you know, you can see through vellum and then Later, I'll add where it, it needs to have a couple more pieces. I'll add it underneath a flower up there in the corner. But I don't want it to be underneath the white. I don't want to see it. So there's that. Again, I'm not going to use any dimensionals just in case you're doing several of these. There's no need to pay the post office more than they already get from us. So there's that. Let's cut out our little our little accent pieces. The um, holly things or the leaf things are the small leaf. And it doesn't fit perfect and because of how close you cut to them, it um, 
like just angle them so it's all on the vellum. Them because these have the the velvet stuff on them, they don't slide. Like when you go to line them up, they don't move very easily. So you have to kind of pick it up and lay it down. I've noticed that with these. But the good news is they also don't move once you put the plate on them because they kind of stick to themselves. And vellum always makes that cracking noise when. So we've got those. The first time I did the card, I made, I did color those uh, little berry things, red and green, and it was ugly. So don't do that. <laughs> they were nasty. They went straight in the trash. That one on there. And then this is the one where it's going to be backwards. So you can see that goes that way. So all you do is line it up on the reverse side of the paper, just like that. And then we'll cut it out that direction. This, this way it will slide though, because now it's on vellum. So half of them will cut right side up and the other half you'll just have to cut upside down. It doesn't, it won't make any difference to them when you see them on the card. Okay, we've got those. Now I have another piece of the scrap white. I'm gonna use the same Happy Holidays. This time I am gonna use black. Because it for this card, it needs the black. Otherwise the um, words would kind of get lost. There are other sayings in this. Um, there's a thank you. Um, and then there's the other two would be ones that I would put on the inside of the cards. And I'm just not doing inside of the cards for time's sake on the class, but I would do those on the inside and then maybe stamp the holly berries and color them in with the red and stamp them in the black. So it kind of pulls your card together, but you all know how to do that. This one I'm going to do more in the center, but not all the way. Cause I do want to put, I'm going to go and every card might be different. So have a look and see this side over here is the part I don't mind if it gets covered up. So I'm going to go this way with this one. And you do the same thing if you had a die. Just decide where you want to line it up. I am going to use my dimensionals. Add two on with this. crooked but my I think it's my words are crooked and you know when you punch something you'd think that you could get it now for this I am going to use the ribbon that comes in it I already cut a little bunch of it out so I'm going to take and add some adhesive right here in the middle I just do like a little bow this way and then squish it up And then I'm going to add it here so I can add my leaves over the top of it and that'll help hold them on. You can use glue dots if you want. And just kind of work with it so you get them where you want them. I'm going to use a glue dot. So you're just kind of fashioning a little a little bouquet up here. Oh, and I forgot to step. So I'll show you the step and then I'll fast forward me doing it and then I'll come back. So 
you just want to kind of make sure that you get those covered up. The ends of that ribbon right there. And then I had a lay, I have it laying here, but I think I've covered it up with. I wanted to use It comes with these berries as well, the dye. And I just wanna use some white ones. So it has a little bit more contrast in there. Let me run these through and then I'll add them. Okay, so I ran those through. It just gives a nice little white stark contrast up here. I just stick a glue dot on those. Oops. Ah, I've got glue dots sticking to my hand. And there you go. Fun little thing. Now again, if there were other embellishments, I would add some more. So let's do that. And then I would do maybe these from the annual catalog. I mean the holiday catalog, which are the red and the gold. Or I would just do the red ones, which I just did nail the in the pines. <laughs> my last in the pines class. So I'm really running low on them. So here it is as is, no additional. And this is everything that comes in your kit. I ended up just putting one of those. I took the other one off because I like, it was too much, I think. But these are just from the um, annual catalog. And again, a lot of you have them because they're often one of my, I like to do the really versatile things as one of my free thank you gifts every month because the red rhinestones, those little pearls, the regular pearls always can be used. So there you go. There's the second one. I think this is a really unique card. It's not one that you're going to be able to make all the time because we don't often have these pieces. I'm going to add another little glue dot up there. Kind of hold this down in here. Maybe. It's a little bit of a challenge because the, the vellum on the vellum. And then also up here, if you feel like this is flinging too much, which I know from old fashioned cards that they often weren't very attached because my sister and I used to deconstruct them. Um, but if you want, then see where this flower is right here. Just add an ever so slight little piece of adhesive and now it won't fling, but you aren't gonna see that through. You could do the same thing down here. If this is bothering you, just ever so slightly add that, but you don't want it to go through the, the white sections. So there you go. There's that card. Let's go back to our first one. You'll have two other videos. There'll be three videos in this class because I'm going to do two cards in the card ones and then the, pro the project, the candle thing will be on its own. So hope you enjoy those two very different looking cards. This one doesn't even have any of the poinsettia stamps or dies on it. So, and I know if you um, go to my YouTube channel, I did the one with the pine boughs. And that also didn't have any of the, the poinsettia stamps on it. So, oh, and you know, and then I did the, one of my most popular videos last month was when I made the leaves out of the poinsettia stamp. That people were, where do you get the leaf stamp? And again, I think poinsettias are leaves, but that one doesn't even, not Christmas, not poinsettias, not nothing. So you don't, just don't look at this as just a poinsettia stamp and sit down and think I have to stamp a poinsettia because you don't have to. So that's what I have for you right now. So, and don't think that you have to watch all three videos at once. Have a great day. Bye.